48 days. We are 48 days out from CIM, which as you know, that's my next race. December 3rd, Sacramento, California. This build has been unlike any other build, endurance, fitness prep I've ever done. But I would say the biggest difference with this prep is that I'm all in and not all consumed. But typically, with a lot of these preps, I'm all consumed. And this one I'm not. And there's a big difference. So we'll talk about that. current go-to run route right now starts in 12 south and it goes through belmont and vanderbilt and empties into downtown nashville now turn around and retrace that which gives me 11 miles so we're a little over eight miles right now wrapping up 11 miles for a beautiful monday Eleven miles is complete. Done in one hour, twenty-two minutes, forty-two seconds at a seven thirty-one minute per mile pace. Mileage right now is mid seventies. I just wrapped up a seventy-six mile week last week, and we ended that week with a big twenty-mile workout at marathon pace. This week again will be mid seventies in terms of volume. But what I want to show you next, I've been getting this question a lot, my shoe rotation. What shoes I've been using for my easy runs, and then what shoes I've been using for my lactate threshold, critical velocity, tempo, and I think the shoe I'm going to wear for race day. Now the shoes that I've been wearing for years for my easy runs are these ones right here. Those are the Saucony Endorphin Speeds. I love these for just like a daily trainer. They have served me well. I get about 300 miles out of each pair, which right now is in one month. I'm running about 300 miles a month right now. Historically, I've worn the Nike Vaporflies for races and my speed work, which I've always loved and I still do love. However, recently I've been wearing the Saucony Endorphin Elites for speed work. And I actually wore these for the 20 mile workout this past week and loved them. I think I'm actually going to race in the Saucony Endorphin Elite. That's what I'm thinking as of right now. We'll see if that changes, but I do love this shoe. So as I was editing this video, I noticed that you could see these holes on the side of my shoe. This happened about two weeks ago. Here's what happened. I went down hard this morning. I always run Remy for the first two miles of my run. And we were cruising, cruising back to drop her off. And she got spooked by another dog. Ran in front of me. I tripped over her leash. I went down hard. So I'm bleeding all over the place right now. I feel that tomorrow. So I recently have started my sourdough journey about two years late or behind everyone else who's done it. But this is my third shot at it. The first one, it was user error. Tasted good, but I messed up the instructions. Second one, I followed all the instructions and it totally flopped, but we rushed it. And this is my third stab at it. I made two loaves at once. This one looks really great, I think. The other one, a little weak. Let's cut into it. That's a good, it's a good piece. Looks really good. 
We got a crispy, flaky, buttery. Crispy, flaky, buttery crust. Spongy and moist on the inside. Should we try this piece? Let's try it. Now I will admit, I'm a huge fan and advocate of Steph's new sourdough venture. So is Charlie. You guys an emo haircut right now. <laughs> so I threw a little bit of Kerrygold's butter on this piece of sourdough. That looks very, 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 very good. It's light, it's soft, it's got a good smell. Great crust, nice chew, good chew. This is good, this is really good. Yeah, you, is that good? It's got a great chew. You want more already? Where'd the piece go that you just ate? You ate it. Charlie loves it. Mmm. You did a good job. Charlie loves this. How good is that? You can't get enough. Yeah. Mom did a good job. So today is an exciting day. Pete, who is the owner of Sisu Sauna, is here in Nashville helping me install my Sisu sauna that was just delivered a few days ago. This is the same sauna we had at our house in Texas. Now we're building out an optimization station in the backyard. So there's gonna be a sauna, there's gonna be a cold plunge. We're gonna link up with Pete right now to get started. Like I said, the pallet got dropped off a few days ago. I broke down the pallet and kind of pulled out all the pieces of the sauna here in the backyard. And one of the things we did once we moved into the house is we had landscapers rip out a lot of the grass here, put these stones in the pavers. And my vision is kind of like sauna here, cold plunge behind, little path to walk through, fire pit, some chairs, and just hang out with some people back here and recover. But these are all the pieces of the sauna that we're about to put together. Hey guys, I'm Pete, the founder of Sisu Sauna. We started Sisu because we realized that there was an actual problem in the sauna space and we just really needed to simplify uh, the sauna experience for people. So we really wanted to not only create a brand, but create the best sauna experience with the best uh, craftsmen in the world with Amish. We also wanted to make sure that we could get our saunas up to 230 degrees plus. We wanted the assembly to be simple and we wanted you to be able to get it within four weeks. So all those reasons, we created Sisu and we're super excited to see where this thing's gonna go. Now, I remember when my first Sisu sauna got delivered at our Texas house, and it was pretty intimidating. But then when Jordan and I put it together the first time, it went up in like three hours. And this is going up so fast. So like once you unpack the pallet and you start putting it together, it's actually pretty quick. So this is a barrel sauna, and it is Western Red Cedar. I was corrected. I asked the question if it was pine. It is not pine. It is cedar. Western red cedar. And just like that, the sauna is complete. Now we are waiting for the cold tub to come in, which we will put right here. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Pete and Sisu for coming out here, helping install it. This is the controller right here, which is also Wi-Fi enabled, so I can control the heat, the settings, turn it on, turn it off from my phone. And then this is what it looks like inside like I said, same exact sauna that I had in Austin. That is the heater there. So I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in here, especially this winter. Tomorrow morning, I have another 11 miles on the schedule. One of the things I like doing before my next day starts is always set the conditions. So I will lay out my clothes, I will lay out my shoes, everything I need for the morning. And what I've been doing recently is prepping my G1M Sport and then mixing it up, just putting it in the fridge for the next day. One less thing I have to worry about. 
and it allows me to just wake up, focus on getting some things done before heading out for a run, drinking my G1M Sport, and then kicking off my miles. So two scoops before every run. So I'll mix this up, put it in the fridge, and then slug it in the morning. So I'll see you guys then. miles completed in one hour 21 minutes and 50 seconds at a 726 minute per mile pace tomorrow is a track workout with 1200s thousands and 800 meter repeats but yesterday on the run I mentioned that this is and has been one of my most effective and enjoyable fitness prep so far this marathon prep, just the, the paces that I'm able to hold, my fitness level at where it's at right now, and just enjoying the, the journey and process of training to run a sub 245 marathon at CIM this year. Now part of that, I, I believe, is the just result of compounding consistency of just running and training over these last couple years. I've learned a lot about running, running more efficiently, and just training really hard, and, and that's paying off. I also truly believe that the reason I'm experiencing such amazing adaptations and truly enjoying this prep right now is because I'm all in and not all consumed. Now. Myself and Jeff Cunningham, my running coach, talked about this a few months ago on my podcast. And I'll, I'll add that clip right here. There's a difference between being all in and all consumed. There's a massive difference. I love the fact that you brought that up. Oh, it's so vitally important because we can fuse the two. All consumed is a situation where the running and the activity actually becomes your identity. And without it, you are soulless and rudderless. Being all in means that you compartmentalize your energies in a way that allow you to be hyper-focused on a goal without it consuming your life to the destruction of your professional life, of your relationships, uh, and the destruction of your personal health. All in doesn't necessitate the abdication of your responsibilities and the other areas of your life that are so vitally important. There is a difference between being all in and all consumed. I've gone through chapters, seasons, fitness preps in the past where I've been all consumed and it's exhausting. It's draining, not just for yourself, but for the people in your life. And I was thinking about this on my run. You know, when you're all in, you're obsessed on the goal. You're showing up, you're putting in the work. You're prioritizing that objective in which you are training to achieve. Being all consumed is when it starts taking over other parts of your life that it shouldn't. It affects your family, your friends, your relationships, your job. That is being all consumed. Like I said, I've been there. I've experienced the the good and bad of being all consumed. The way I was thinking about it is that sometimes we expect life or the people in our lives to comply to our wants and needs. It is a selfish expectation and request. And I believe, because I've been there before, like I said, I believe it is a lack of perspective and awareness. And when we're all consumed and we lack perspective and awareness and we allow it to affect other parts of our lives, like our relationships, our job, our friendships, our, our just enjoyment, it has negative effects. You know, fitness prep in itself, like I'm doing right now, is a stressor on the body. It's a stressor on the mind. 
and when we're all consumed, that's just an additional unnecessary stressor that we're layering on top of more stress. So I would encourage you guys to just think about it. How can you be all in and not all consumed? Be, because you can. You can be all in on a goal without being all consumed. And right now in this prep, I am all in. I'm not all consumed. I'm not allowing it to affect my relationships, friendships, the enjoyment of this prep, other parts of my life. And I believe that's why it's been so effective. That's why I'm making such strong progress from week to week leading into this next marathon. I also want to mention that today is my third wedding anniversary. So I'm about to walk in and see my lovely wife and tell her how much I love her and I've enjoyed our time together, our marriage, and experiencing parenthood this past year. It's been great. Steph, I love you. I love the chapter and season of life we're in right now and I can't wait for the future years to come and what is to hold for us. Also, if you are watching this, Steph, please keep making your sourdough. I had a piece this morning before I run. It was delicious.